Hey everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, and tonight for dinner, I was invited to eat, it's called the dining room at the house on Satong. It's one of the most renowned, uh, prestigious restaurants in Bangkok, and the reason I'm so interested to try the food there is because the chef is Turkish. She's an, an amazing chef. And on top of the food, the restaurant is located in one of the best pres preserved, one of the most beautiful historical buildings in Bangkok. So it's going to be an exciting meal and I'm going to share it all with you in this video right now. I'm not eating alone. My beautiful wife Ying. <laughs> the building is called the House on Satong, but the restaurant is called the Dining Room. Hello, Sandika. Thank you very much. They open for dinner, but we're here an hour early before they open, so we're just gonna walk around. I'm gonna go back in the kitchen, get some views of what they're cooking for us tonight. Just walk around and enjoy. The house on Satong, it was originally built in 1889 by a Chinese businessman. It eventually got turned over and became the embassy of the Soviet Union and then later Russia. And now it's part of the W Hotel, which is located right next to uh, the house on Satong. It feels like you're in a totally different world when you're here. It's like a, it's an open courtyard. It's like an oasis in the middle of downtown Bangkok. What's up, Fatih? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for having us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. We're Welcome very happy to house on Satong. Thank you very much. I start to work in Qingdao in China. Okay. And then after I moved to Beijing. And then after Beijing, I moved to Tokyo. I work at the Ryugin in uh, Nihonya Ryugin in Roppongi. Oh, yes, yes. Learn a lot of Japanese, uh, you know, techniques, Japanese cuisine. I moved to Copenhagen. I work in Noma. And I come back to Hong Kong. And the restaurant is closed down in Hong Kong. And this project come up. So that's just the destiny, you know. But I also always wanted to come to Bangkok and work. I think Bangkok is very much inspiring. As a chef, you work many years in different kitchens. And, you know, you learn different things. You always wait for, for, for you to find yourself, you know? Mm. Like, what is your vision? What you actually you have to cook? So I think in Bangkok, I found myself, you know, like my style, my own style, to creating something really special dining experience. Our aim here to, to not your, feed your stomach first, feed your mind first, and your soul, then your stomach. It's modern Turkish? No, or is it we call mixed in, with we call, No, 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 in, we don't do any okay. fusion or no nothing. Fusion. Pure, okay. innovative Turkish. That's Innovative it. Turkish. Yeah, that's the cuisine. Okay. I wanted to do something really out of the box, something different. I think doing Turkish cuisine like this, it's unique, you know? It's like not many places do yeah. in the world. So that's why this is something more special, I think. This has just come from the oven. Oh, we the pide, like the pide, the Turkish pide, awesome. Do, look at this. Wow. It's, you see, with 24 hours, we do fermentation in outside. The, the yeast come from Istanbul. Mm. Okay, Ying and I are sitting right here at the front, the bar counter seating, and it's really cool. It's like sushi bar counter seating, uh, which it's, I mean, it's designed this way so that you can see the, the chef as he plates the dishes. We're gonna be eating the signature journey. Uh, sea urchin from Hokkaido, but this is the buffoon. It's like very sweet and big pieces. It's quite a nice one. This is the, the cabbage dolma. It's inside has a Turkish oh, rice inside. Yeah. We cook them with the muzzle juice. I will say like a sushi rice and then we mix everything together and then we make it like a small piece of dolma. And then nice caramelized caviar as well. So this is the first one, cabbage. Each pilar. This is a one biter and he told us to, to just pick it up with our fingers. Even in your fingers, you can feel how soft and delicate that cabbage is. Just that cabbage in your fingertips, it just feels like a, like a cheek. Wow. Awesome. Mmm. Oh, the flavor of that dill. The, the uni, the, the sea urchin just literally just dissolves in your mouth. This is a beef tenderloin. We torch through charcoal. So the flavor of charcoal is coating the, it's like a grilled beef, but it's going to be tartar. And smell like a piece of doner kebab. I want you to smell this. And it does, that smoke coming off of the meat, it smells exactly like a doner. Oh, that smells good. So the bone marrow, we add inside the tartar. Salcha, it's uh, made by Pepper. Ah. It's like a tomato paste, but actually it's not tomato. It's made by red bell pepper. Egg yolk. 
spring onion. Reduced pomegranate reduction. Eastern part of Turkey from Hatay. This is sumak. Yeah. Fermented uh, Turkish chili. It's come from Urfa. It's very special chili. It's, it's hot. Leave it chili. So we mix everything together. After he smoked that meat, uh, then he chopped it up. Uh, he minced that up by hand, then he added in a, a, an abundance of spices along with some bone marrow and some egg yolk to me. That's gonna make it extremely rich. It's on top of a bulgar wheat cracker. Special copper from Grand, uh, Grand Bazaar. Smoking inside the, this like Ottoman style copper. So we smoke. So what is, what is the oak inside of here? Oak chips. Oak, yeah. okay. Oak chips smoke into a... Oh, let me get a hold on real so, quick. This is something very special. I made to order this one from the Grand Palace. It's like an Ottoman style plate. So we serve whole pieces and you hold the smoke inside. And then we serve like this. Wow. Enjoy. What a beautiful, beautiful dish. Yeah, you gotta eat this in one bite for sure. Cheers. Wow. Insane. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's that is ridiculously good. Oh, that's a that's a bite I don't want to swallow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, in the fish market, usually they have a cockroach and media tower, which is fried mussels. I'm sure you saw. Oh yeah. This is the black mussels we fry, and it's a little bit smoky paprika on top. This is another one biter. It's a fried mussel, but you can eat the shell. He's recreated a shell, an edible shell. That's really a, a play on textures because you've got that crunchy cracker. That is a mussel, right? Not an oyster. It's almost like a, it's so soft and creamy. It's almost like a, an oyster. And moving right along to the next course, Chilber egg, spinach and potato, house fermented Turkish. Oh, it also comes, he also just um, set on our table the, the house fermented Turkish pide, which is that bread. Oh, oh, it just keeps coming out. Oh, there's more inside of there. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the spinach. Okay, egg yolk and yogurt down there. The crunch of the spinach wrapped up in the egg yolk with that sourness from yogurt. You can actually smell the aroma of this pide, that sourish aroma. Oh, it's just so soft and pillowy. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> that bread is so good. It's so like gummy, slightly on the inside and then crusty. I like this. <laughs> It's very good. He's in love with the bread. <laughs> Tomato, stuffed with the uh, goat cheese salter, and underneath the green one is a parsley sauce, and pomegranate, and we finish the dish with the uh, goat cheese ice. Something that's worth noting is that every dish has a story, for a, a personal story with the chef, and so you really feel the connection when you're eating, and that's, that just adds to the culinary experience. I just had the same sensation you get when you open a runny yolk. Okay, I'm gonna add some of the frozen goat milk uh, to that. Pick it all up in one bite. That tomato is so sweet, yet so sour, at the same time, but perfectly balanced. And it, it, there's zero like stringy, like pulpiness to that tomato. It's just like silky smooth. Uh, the chef, he really likes the white asparagus, but not green asparagus. So what he's done here is he's uh, made a, a white asparagus, which he dipped, uh, but then on the, the other side is a tattoo of a green asparagus, which is made from fava beans. And so they're served together. That is really just that, that that natural like snap to that asparagus. For your fish dish, yeah, this is a turbo. We keep it together with the bone because this jelly, you see the jelly? Uh-huh. That's give the amazing taste of the fish. So we cook on the bone after we separate and we serve. This is your fish. Everybody in Turkey, in you know, their mom has the mantra dish, which is a uh, different regions as well as the, you know, the size, the shape, how you serve it, it's changed. So this mantu is stuffed with eggplant, no meat. This is a kaimak and garlic. And this is the tomato sauce. 
prepare from five different kind of tomato and finish with the burnt butter. So you should eat everything together. Why is it from my mom? Because this is her recipe. It's a vegetarian version. That's just comfort food taken to the next level. Baby squid stuffed with the mushrooms and uh, the sauce made by the squidding as well. The shadow of the squid. Every dish is just so exciting here. The artfulness, the creativity. Kind of looks also like a palm tree. The umami of the mushrooms come in. Again, again, so delicate. You can taste all of the individual flavors in there. Mixed dish phosphorus thunder, which is a uh, famous turbo. This is yogurt and uh, peppers, and also a lot of spices from Anatolia. Turbo cook on the bone, and this is the egg of the turbo we cure and we smoke. Then he finished it off with some foam, um, and there's also some cured roe on top, as well as an artico artichoke salad. It's so delicate, I don't think I'll, I can poke it. It would just fall apart, dissolve, so I've got to shovel it. The fish has this incredible soft and like, yeah, you can taste the jellyishness of the fish. For the next dish, I'm going back to the kitchen. The first, whole quail we grill on the charcoal. Yeah. Very beautiful, like a salamander, awesome. but it's a manual double royal. Feast at the harem. Feast, oh, okay. you know harem, right? Yeah, yeah. So in Ottoman Empire, the harem room is the where the sultan's wives stay. Mm -hmm. There, they live there, and then also the the sultan's own apartment inside the the harem. <laughs> so the quail is one of the feast dish which favors of the sultans. I call this essence of spice market yeah, yeah, or so the good. seasoning for the quail. Inside still juicy. That's the, it's very important. A lot of spices inside. Add juice from the bone of the quail. Let's put this one. Grape sauce, different sauce. Now you can taste it. <laughs> okay. And then that dish is ready. I'm racing back to my seat. I think he has already served it. Okay, so next course, and this is quail. I also absolutely love how the quail foot kind of hangs off the, the edge of the plate. That's a great touch. Need the knife for this one. Oh man, I may need to just go in with my fingers though on the drumstick. Still pink and beautiful on the inside. Get some of the, some of the, both the bone juice and the, the swirl of that grape juice. Age 17 days on the dry aged quail. Say that again. So, <laughs> by the way, we aged the quail with Himalaya salt in the chiller for 17 days. This is wow. dry aged quail, so it give even extra flavor. Oh wow, that is yeah. You've got the crunchy skin. The meat is so ridiculously succulent in there. And as chef said, eat it like an Ottoman sultan. Hands down, the juiciest, most flavorful, dry-aged quail I've ever had. I love the aftermath of that dish. It looks like you had a fight with a bird. Yeah. This is the bonus dish. It's called kuzu kebab. <laughs> the lambs is from a, a three months old baby lamb. The eggplant puree, and this is a caramelized lamb cream. It's like ultimate umami experience. The ultimate umami experience. That is going to be just ridiculous. Oh wow. Oh wow. That's one of those, those bites that I couldn't even make it fully through the bite before the, the flavor explosion just coated my mouth. Oh, the fatty tenderness will blow your taste buds. <laughs> it's gonna be strawberry snow. Amao. Japanese strawberry. <laughs> 
strawberry snow. It's from uh, Japan, it's this Japanese strawberry. It's Amao strawberry. So we put one per, per dish. This one called Shura. So we just pour the sauce. Ying, how is it? <laughs> By all means, one of the most beautiful desserts I've ever seen. So I gotta start with that strawberry snow, and I got an herb with that too. It kind of is like strawberry yogurt, but a, a different texture. Frozen yet flaky all at the same time. Oh, look at that, Ying. Look at the inside of that strawberry. Wow. That was excellent. Semolina, sugar, and goat cheese curd. That's it. It's goat milk ice cream. Final dessert of the meal. Uh, Turkish helva. Oh, wow. Has a very, very creamy texture. That almost tastes like cream cheese. And it almost has like a cream cheese stickiness to it. All oh, those pistachios and that completes this incredible meal. This one, the last dish, is called sweet end. Oh, okay. I spoke too soon. Actually, on the menu it says sweet end <laughs> as the end, but I thought that was like the end. But actually, the end, the sweet end, is a tree. And we both keep it in our mouth. Mmm. Oh, okay. I think it's Pop Rocks. Oh, but when you bite it though, it just oozes with chocolate. Uh -huh. It's melting. That just gushes with like pomegranate juice. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Amazing. It's great to such a good meal. You. That was a spectacular dinner. I want to first start off by saying a huge thank you to Chef Fatih and Kun Fa for inviting us in. Uh, one thing I have to tell you is that Chef Fatih, his passion, his art, his creativity, his knowledge of food is will blow you away and I loved interacting with him, talking with him and him explaining the dishes to us as we ate them. That was a highlight. Ying, what was your favorite dish? Strawberry yogurt. The strawberry yogurt? Yeah, okay, that strawberry yogurt was incredible. Uh, but Ying and I both agreed that the steak tartare, that raw steak with the, the donut kebab flavor, that was unbelievable. But also the quail was absolutely sensational. So huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now. I'm gonna be publishing lots more food and travel videos and click the little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video. Thanks again for watching. Good night from Bangkok.